So originally I had this huge long video plan. I'm gonna break it up into parts. We're going to be talking about some of the misperceptions about using DSLR in video cameras for high-end video work, including independent film, cinematography, things of that nature. There are some misunderstandings that I'm seeing. I see it time and again in different reviews. So I wanted to make this video to clear up uh, some of the misunderstandings. I'm not picking on any reviewer, any camera model, uh, any camera manufacturer. What I have noticed is I have two sets of friends. So a new camera will come out and one set of friend, uh, they are based in photography. That's where their history is. They learn photography and they're getting it more into video. And then I have my cinematographer friends who have been shooting video or film as long as they've been in the career. And so a camera will come out and I'll ask them, hey, what do you think about this new camera? The answers that come from both groups are consistent, but they're also very different from one another. My observation has been that the cinematographers are much more open-minded about a camera for video recording than my photographer friends. So I know, and if I meet somebody new and, and we start talking about cameras, I know within a few sentences which background they're coming from. And there are some reasons for this. And one of them, the first one we're going to talk about is the crop factor. So a camera comes out, hey, what do you think about this crop factor? These guys say, well, I don't know, I'll have to see, you know, what it looks like on film. My photography friends say, oh, 1.6 crop factor, 1.7 crop factor, you can't use it. So let's talk about this a little bit. And some of these things I'm guilty of myself, but I've learned over the years and I'm like, oh, okay. Full frame, 35 millimeter film means something different to both groups. Now, in recent years, this has changed because we have access to these full frame digital cameras that can record video. The 5D Mark II came out in 2009. It changed everything and it's created some misunderstandings. So let's back up a little bit. When we talk about 35 millimeter film, uh, the general definition is that's the gauge. It's how wide the film is. But when we look at the history of film, we're talking about the actual celluloid, in still photography cameras, it would run sideways. Okay, so left and right. Motion picture 35 is vertical. It runs up and down, and the orientation of both cameras is still landscape. But what that means is basically the recording media size is fundamentally and dramatically different in photographic 35 versus motion picture 35. And to make things even more confusing, in motion picture, they will say full frame 35 millimeter film when it's a completely different size. So when the digital era took over and we started getting these amazing full frame digital still cameras, camera manufacturers decided to mimic the size of photographic 35 millimeter film. There are some variations. Suffice it to say, it's 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters. It's a big sensor. You've seen it if you've owned these, owned these cameras. Now, super 35 millimeter motion picture film, it has a bit of a history. There's actually several different kinds of 35 millimeter film. Super 35 is specifically different in that it removed the audio track from the film in order to accommodate greater recording area on the film itself and it also shifted the point of recording over just a little bit. Those two things define Super 35. If you look at its measurements, we're looking at 24.89 by 18.66 millimeters and if you look at the surface area of both of those, it's about half the size, give or take. Camera manufacturers like Canon and Nikon, they have APS-C sized sensors which are also slightly different. There's some variations within a few millimeters. I think you can suffice it to say it's close enough APS-C Super 35 without getting into the nitty picky details of the actual millimeters. It's 1.5, 1.6. Why am I bringing this up? If you look at the dedicated video cameras on the market today, I like the C300 Mark II Canons. I think it's awesome. Sony FS5, FS7, Tons of video cameras, you know, you got Blackmagic, you got all these cameras. The vast majority of them are about APS-C sized or Super 35 millimeter sized. So 
the reason I'm bringing this up is just in terms of a historical standpoint, that size of recording media has recorded over a thousand feature films. It's the industry standard for commercial work, things of that nature. It's been used for decades as a suitable size recording format. So when I hear somebody say 1.6x crop factor recording for video or 4K is a deal breaker, I just don't agree with that. It's not a deal breaker. It's been used for decades to record motion picture. Now, I will agree that it is nice to have that 36 by 24 full frame photographic sensor to record video. That is really nice because you get these really wide fields of view and things of that nature. Can you use APS-C to record video? Absolutely. If you look at micro four thirds, 2X, Sometimes these crop factors work out to be 2.2x. No problem, use a wider lens if it's that big of a deal. 3x crop factor, that's a teeny sensor and, and that was beloved by beginning filmmakers for ages. Now having said all that, one argument that can be made for the 36 by 24 frame is for shallow depth of field, is that when you're shooting you can get tremendously shallow depths of field, with these full frame lenses, you can shoot at 1.2 or 1.4, 1.6, and that is true. It gives it a tremendously artistic look. It's beautiful, it's nice. You can shoot you know, more wide. Uh, but something that I learned shooting on movie sets is that when you are shooting people and you have a moving subject, it typically means you have to change focus. So the more shallow your depth of field, the less forgiving it is going to be if you are trying to keep their eyes in focus, especially if they're moving or walking through a frame, even if they're talking in dialogue, this little bit of breathing, I don't know if it's possible to pull focus on a full frame 36 by 24 at 1.2 or 1.4. Maybe there are people who can do it. I know I am not one of them. Uh, on the Super 35 or the APS-C, I like shooting at about 2.8 maybe 2.0, but I wouldn't go wider than that simply because I know I would miss the shot. I can't do it. But having said all that, in conclusion, I think you really have to pick the right tool for the job, depending on whatever whatever it is you're doing. Like the GH4, some people will dismiss it. I think it's a great running gun camera, a great documentary camera. It's a great camera for drone work because it's so small and light. And that's what cinema photographers really do is they pick the right tool for the job. It's like, you have a bolt size and here's the wrench and this is the wrench we wanna use. That's what picking a camera is all about. And so as I have a couple more of these videos coming out, that's what I hope this will do for you is define what the tool is and how it can be used and then leave that up to you to decide. If you found this video helpful, you might be interested in one of my many camera or photography specialty courses. They're available by DVD and download and come with a 100% money back guarantee. They can be ordered from the following link.